Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Ginny Barrow. I'm getting ready to work on a presentation that I'm delivering on Thursday for the Women Entrepreneurs Empowerment Summit with Latinas in Business. I will be uh, one of the presenters for the workshops that is all about women and how do we become empowered as women running our businesses to survive and to not only survive, but thrive post COVID world so that we can both be the beacons of light for our families, as well as be the leaders that we are here to be as women. And I wanted to stop in very quickly to share with you a little bit about what I'm going to talk about with them. And one of the topics that I found to be very transformational for me has been getting in touch with my story and even the stories of those people around me and using my story as fuel instead of using that story to keep me down and to keep me demotivated from going after my dreams as a leader, as a mother, as a head of household, as a friend, as somebody who is ready to live her full potential in society, regardless of anything or any paradigms or frameworks that we may believe society is upholding us to. And part of my story, as I was sitting with my family yesterday, enjoying a wonderful barbecue, is that I realized that each one of us has such a unique interpretation of the events that have occurred in our lives. I have, and I don't know that any of you know this, I have nine other siblings. I'm sure you only heard me talk about two brothers, which are my brothers by the same mom and dad. Well, my dad was uh, a man who had four different families. And I was, my brothers and I were one of his families. We were his first families. After us, he had another family where he had two children. And much later in life, he had a third child with that same family. In between that, he had three daughters and he had a son. So between all of us, three with my family, two, and then three with the other family, that's six, and then three more, that's nine, and then another one, that's 10 children in total. So I have nine other siblings out of which I only know two. And when we were talking yesterday with my family, I realized that my interpretation of my own story with my father, my biological father, you also have heard me talk about my dad, which is really referring to my stepdad, Joe, who my mom uh, married back in 1982 when I was almost 14 years old and I was still in the Dominican Republic waiting for my papers to come to the United States. So my biological father's story uh, told through me will be very different than his story told through any other of my siblings. We each have our own lenses through which we interpret what happened. And I learned yesterday as I was talking with my brothers and my mom who met one of my brothers who I haven't met yet that his life, my brother's, my half brother's life was very different than how I thought it had been. And so I realized a couple of things yesterday. The, the first one is that we make a lot of assumptions. And I didn't know that one of the biggest sources of pain for my biological father was that during a period of two years, he was raising his three daughters the ones that I mentioned before that was one of his families. And for those two years, he got very close to them. And the mother had gone to the city and came back two years later and picked up the girls and left. And that threw him into a deep depression. I had never known that. My father passed away, my biological father passed away around the age of 78. Uh, back in 2014 or so. And he passed away in a home in a deep depression state 
And some people may, may say that he also uh, was suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's. We will never know. He was in a home in the Dominican Republic. And the story that I can tell you about my biological father doesn't include this last portion that I just mentioned to you. This was news to me as of yesterday. And so here I am making judgments, creating my story around what happened to me and my family and my brothers. And if you read my book, Healing Leadership, I share with you a little bit of, of what I recall vividly about my personal story. So I just want to bring this up because our stories could be a source of fuel or they could be a source of pain. And uh, the one thing that prevents us from reaching our full potential. We can tell ourselves stories today about why this is all we can do in our lives. And this is all there is. And there's nothing more to work toward or it's not worth it of, or you know, what's the point? And at the end of the day, our stories is what happened and how we interpreted what happened. And it will be a different story from your siblings, if you happen to have any siblings, which tells you what? It doesn't really matter where we come from. And even though it could have been so painful what we learned that our parents did or didn't do or what a family member did or didn't do, that at the end of the day, we own our future. Nobody is going to own our future for us. So if you have a desire, if you have a dream, if you know you have more in you, then it's time to own your future, to own your life, and to let the stories, if you want to write them down, write them down, but let those stories vanish and let them be your fuel so that you can reach your full potential, whatever that looks like for you. For me, my full potential means living life with joy, regardless of all the stuff that has happened, regardless, regardless of my own history, the shortcomings that I may list for you in a long, long list, none of that matters. What matters is what I do with my life from this point forward. And I'm holding in my hand the little notebook that I used for years. And I filled many of these since I came to this country back in 1983. I used these little books to write down words that I didn't understand. And I used to write down the word, how you pronounce it, the definition. And I've been looking for this little book for a long time because this little book reminds me of my own potential. I came to this country without speaking English. I had to find out and write down what yarn meant, what reef meant, what skeptical meant, all these little words that most of us take for granted, I didn't understand. And many of you who speak a second language know exactly what I'm talking about. And today in 2021, this has been a long, long time. I am now a two-time number one best-selling author and I have a leadership career and I have been in industry for 30 years and I was, had the opportunity to get an education and to rise above the poverty level that I came from. And so I don't care what you're doing in your life or what stage of life you're in, you have full potential to do whatever it is that you desire to do. And your life and your story are only the conduits and the pathway to fuel you and to give you the energy that you need to make it happen. You know where to reach me? I'm at callwithginny.com and thank you for letting me share my thoughts with you on this Sunday. It's lovely out here. I'm enjoying being outdoors and doing a little bit of work as I prepare to deliver my workshop with Latinas in Business this week. I'll see you soon.